Hi everybody, it's Robbie from 10A and I am just sitting on my deck today, sitting on my swing. Such an incredible, beautiful day today. The whole month of February has been just so cold and wet. He said it was only going to get into the like 62 degrees, but it's already warmer than that. We're about 70 today and that is nice. So I decided since I was getting over the flu that I had picked up at the hospital when I went for some tests, um, to come out and take a break and sit on the deck and analyze what I want to do here. I'm slowly working on things. I've worked on setting up all my onions. Well, not all my onions. Long story short, I'll explain it as I put the onions in. But what I did, or Gary did, or both of us did, is Gary went and bought some onions, white onions and yellow onions. And that was back in probably November. And we simply didn't get around to planting them. He was going to set up a special bed. I was going to set up a special area. And the more you plan on setting up something special, things don't seem to get done. And then it kind of got pushed to the side. And lo and behold, found it the other day. They didn't look so good. Some of them were growing, but they were supposed to be in the ground. In, you know, at the end of the year, they were supposed to be put in the ground between October and December out here in Southern California. So they went in the ground now. I mean, what am I going to do? Throw them away? No. So I went ahead and I took some of them and put them in one of these planter beds here. These little upside down planters and we'll see what happens. And I planted them way too close together. But I can move them if I want, or I can use them if they make it, even as small onions. And then we also had a package that Gary picked up of garlic. And I took some of the you know, pieces taken off of that. And then Gary took the rest and he put them in his garden. So we've got garlic now in his garden somewhere. And he took all the white onions, which I did not take any of those. And he put those in places in his garden. And he took the rest of the yellow onions that I didn't plant. Because it came at 60, but I'll be honest, most of them are dried up. I've got to make sure that when I get something, that I buy plants that I plan on getting into the ground that week. And we've done this in the past. You get all excited, you go to the nursery, or you go someplace special where there's maybe a plant show or something. And you just buy, 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 because there's all these exotic or interesting things but if you don't have the time or the place to put them in the ground it ends up to be perfectly honest a waste of money so i am pacing myself much better than i have in the past that much i will admit so now i do think but what happened like i said was we bought the onions which you have to buy them here in southern california when they get them because what happens in the end of the year at the right time is they get them in and it's almost like they get them in as one lot. This is the big box stores. They get them in and then once they're sold, they're gone and you can't get any more. So that's why I don't even know if the onions will make it, but I will be better prepared next year. Besides I have all the green onions I want and with the walking onions, I can always pull some of the bulbs and use the tiny little bulbs from them on dishes I really don't like buying, but I have been buying periodically. It's really sad. A few years ago, when we first started the garden, I could go to the store and I could buy garlic, break it apart, put it in the ground, and we grew garlic. I, that's what I did during the winter. I bought garlic at the grocery store. Then, to be honest, I bought some California garlic. I'm not going to say the name of the company, but it was like, wow. The garlic I bought the first time and planted was from China. I got it at the 99 cent store and that grew beautiful. But the next time I bought garlic, I decided to do the right thing, I thought. And I bought some garlic, but this was before I knew what they started doing to most of our food now. And I didn't realize it was irradiated. So what happened was it started to grow and then it stopped. And none of the garlic, I, not one, and I bought a whole bunch different times not one of the garlics that i bought from california grew they were all irradiated it was from a large company it wasn't a backyard person had i bought some garlic from a backyard gardener you know gone to a farmer's market it probably would have been perfectly fine 
but coming from a company, they irradiate it. They also can call it pasteurization, whatever they want to call it. They do that so the shelf life will last. In other words, they can sell their garlic and it will sit for six months longer and just sit there in the store. And there's no hurry on selling it because the garlic isn't growing, it isn't rotting, and it isn't going anywhere. Same thing with ginger. A few years ago when we started, we went to the store and we were buying ginger and planting it and the ginger was just growing beautifully. We had all this ginger. Gary had all this ginger. I had all this ginger growing. You've seen the videos on it. And this past year, last year, I couldn't get any of the ginger to grow. It would, some of them would, would start, and that's very typical. And that would be it. You'd see the little green peak, and it won't grow anymore. So you've got to be really careful because so much of it now has been treated. So it has a long shelf life. I literally bought some ginger, and I left some of it on in a bowl. And instead of rotting or molding, it just sat there for about four or five months until it finally just simply dried out. It didn't even break down, just slowly dried out. So you really gotta get stuff that you know is ready to grow and you may have to go to a seed company and buy some of those things because it's getting tougher here in parts of the US on what you can pick up from the grocery store and grow. Because we used to grow squash seeds and everything. I, I haven't tried any squash seeds, so I don't know. I'm assuming it might work. But, you know, we've got our own ginger, so I'm going to grow from my own ginger. We've got our own turmeric. I'm going to grow from my own. And as far as garlic, we did buy some. Hopefully we didn't wait too long. Some of it will grow, and we'll be able to grow our own. And if not, I will buy some that is packaged and put together, in, you know, for growing. In other words, not for eating. You can eat it, but the reason it's more expensive is because it's been packaged properly and not radiated or sprayed or anything, so you can grow it. So that's it. I'm just enjoying a nice sunny day, sitting on my torn up swing that I've got here, my old swing that's been on the deck for probably 10 years. And it was funny, Gary said, you should hide it. You're working on your deck and it looks so bad. It does look so bad. No, because at some point, when it dries out really good, I'm going to make a cover for it. I can't buy the proper seeding for it. And I guess I could if I went to and tried to figure out what company it was. But I bet you the seat would cost me more than the whole swing cost me when I got it. So I'll just cover it. So that's it. But I'm analyzing how I'm setting up. I brought over the inside of a dishwasher that Gary picks up his dishwashers. And I looked at it and I thought, you know... That's going to work out really good because I don't want to sit, you know, anything directly on the wood. These upside down planters I picked up years ago, they're lifted. There is airspace, so it will keep from rotting the wood, you know, too badly. And if I take any of these flower pots and sit them directly on the wood, even if I set the flower pot on a brick, it would hold the moisture, the brick would hold the moisture, so whatever I would sit it on would hold the moisture and make the wood just rot away. So I figured I would look for something. I was looking for wire or whatever, but I saw the dish rack and I thought, you know, off the ground, I could put a few different things on it and the deck needs a bad job of painting soon. Really, it needs to be painted. But what I'm gonna do is I've got all this paint I buy and I get it at Home Depot for 50 cents. So I'm gonna find some brown paint and wherever I decide to sit the dish rack, I'm just gonna paint it underneath. I don't care if my deck's got patchwork. What do I care right now? So I'll make sure that gets painted. And then I'm gonna set some pots on top, but I still think I'm gonna direct the pots somewhere else so I can catch the water and put it back in. I'll see, I like to make everything work for itself if it can. Like here it's not, you know, underneath I've got these pots and it does stay wet around the bottom. Not much I can do about that, but at least what's dripping down from the top part of these upside down planters does go down to the pot underneath. And it wasn't meant to have a pot. You weren't supposed to put a pot there, but I did. And it works quite well. So little by little, I'll get the deck together. My Swiss chard's still growing and as you can see, the popolo that is done. It, it's still alive, the plant. The, the stalk is green. 
and it's still flowering. It keeps opening up the flowers, but there's no more leaves on it. So there's nothing really to use as far as an herb. But I'll figure out where I want to grow some. The seeds won't grow right now. They really need very warm weather. I could bring them in and I could start them that way, but here's the problem. They may not do good here until the weather warms up. So I might be wasting my time. That's why I'm not gonna bother because they are just easy to just put some seeds in the ground. And I have methods and ways of taking care of the seeds in the ground until the, you know, the plants start to grow. And then just leave them right where you directly sowed them in the, in the ground. That would be the best thing to do. And so when I'm ready, I'll do that. Lettuce, that's lettuce seed up here. And what I do with that is I just grab the seed heads and sprinkle them in places. And see, this is all lettuce coming up here. This lettuce, this all has to be cleaned up. But that's all lettuce, more lettuce. Just sprinkle it right in. And you can even move some of this if you wanted to. Yeah, this is from Tomatillo's. A lot of this is weeds. I have not cleaned up the deck yet. I'm analyzing what I'm going to do. But this is where I'm starting the onions and probably going to put some peas around here and get some peas growing. I figured I might as well let it do double duty. And then it will go up this teepee I put here. And this was interesting because when I put three, it didn't, it wasn't secure. So because it's square, four is very secure. So this has worked out really, really well. This I'm probably going to leave because this is oregano and it's been here. It's like a carpet. Look at this. It's been here for a long time. And I think I'm going to leave it because it's well established. I might thin it out, maybe grab some and move it, which I've already done. I rarely use it. And I've got to clean up the uh, garlic chives down there and still figure out how I'm going to set this up. But I'll work on it. And then the crest, the water, it's not water crest. I think they called it upline crest. That's the crest I got from the 99 cents. So look at that. It's still growing. That doesn't even belong there. A couple little brown leaves. Just pull those out. All in all, it is still growing. And we're still eating it. Mmm. Peppery. Very radish-like. Very good. Gary's been picking it. The crest seems to do much better sitting in water. So that one's growing. I bought two. This one I put in a smaller container, a yogurt container. And it's doing okay too. The one in the bigger container is probably doing better. But you do need to leave water underneath, I found out. It likes a lot of water. So it's almost like watercress. And that's why it will do so well here. But you know what? For for a couple weeks and it just keeps going it's fine with me however long it makes it and then of course the dill is coming up i had just sprinkled some seeds of dill in here and look at this ah oh, it smells so good dill is nice i got dill coming up all through here but this all has to be cleaned out see the seeds and this is popolo and no matter what i do i can put it in there bury it take care of it it won't grow more lettuce see this is all lettuce growing in there and this, of course, I've talked about this. This is just the cutting. I should clean this up. But I'm not going to eat the leaves, and they're too yellow. Take them off and put them back. They're not going to compost on the top, but they'll dry, and then I can put some wood chips or something. Remember, it doesn't compost on the top. It's whatever is right underneath. I haven't had a poplar last this long, but see, it is still throwing seeds. Still throwing flowers, I should say. They're still opening. There's one that's just starting to open. So I'm not sure. It went through the really cold weather and it's still going. This is weeds. South thistle. I haven't pulled it out yet because the birds keep coming to it. The goldfinches keep coming. In fact, while I was just out here now, they were coming. Oh, a piece of collard plant that I literally threw in here. And you know what? It's growing. I believe it's set root, so I'll decide on what I'm going to do with that. But that's it. Just kind of analyzing on what's going to happen out there. A lot of that is just grass weeds coming up. I've got to go through that. It's just been so cold until I know and I get the okay. In other words, I feel that we're not going to be getting down into the 30s anymore. 
I'll get busy and start getting more things done. The tomato plants, though some of the leaves are yellow, they are still throwing tomatoes, even with all the cold weather. And we're still getting tomatoes. Look at that. There's a red one back there. Should get that off. And I am going to probably say goodbye to a lot of these trees. I might move this tree. It's a beautiful tall apple tree. Just some seeds I dropped in there and it grew. I might pick one or two and find a place for them and stick them. But I'm not going to be basically taking care of it. Parsley's coming up everywhere. Again, just seeds that I sprinkled around while I was out here and lettuce. And the garlic chives are my favorite. They just keep going and going and going. And they will go all winter. And these are orange trees. That's an orange tree. So, oh, and look at this. Onion chives. They're flowering. Is that a sign of spring? I hope so. I don't know. It's got all this stuff there. I had seeds in here. There were some tomato seeds. Just tomatoes I've eaten squeezed in there. But look at that. They are coming up now. I'm hoping that means spring is here. I so want spring. We're still in winter. But yes, it is flowering. And I'll collect that seed and I'll get the onion chives going. But that's it. I've got a lot of cleaning to do. The grass I threw in there for the dogs. Sometimes they want to nibble on a little grass. Even though they can go down into the yard, it's here if they want it. And then eventually I'll do something else with it. That's another apple tree. And again, this was left for the goldfinches right now. So we'll see what happens um, as I clean this all up. They're just going to have to go to the hillside. But you know, the hills are green. They're green all over, and so I expect to see deer pretty soon come through. They probably come through really early in the morning. I have been coming out early and I haven't seen them, but they've got a lot of trees, so they can hide among the trees. I have seen coyotes go through here. So they, they will go through. They're kind of more bold. The deer come out, I guess, when they're more desperate. They have a lot of areas right now that they can go eat a lot of their grass that they're grazing on, and then as more of that disappears in weed abatement and people start clearing it then they'll get more bold and coming out more to different places so that's it more lettuce i think i've showed you this before just lettuce i sprinkled in here should be cleaned up but get this cleaned up and i my whole goal is to make this more pro, uh, productive because right now i didn't do anything last year i just kind of just hand threw things in as i walked through just sprinkled a little seed and figured whatever grows grows now I'm going to do it a little different. Now I'm going to get a little serious and see what you can do without having a yard. So I think with that, I'm going back in the house, get some stuff done, and then go into the garden. Kitty, tell them have a great day, and don't forget to eat what you grow. Say bye-bye, everybody. You're not going to say bye? If you said bye, then I'd be in really good, a good place. Bye-bye, everybody.